Here we have verse 24 of the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John. Jesus is giving some explanation to his disciples concerning the antipathy that is directed against both him and the disciples. And of course, Jesus has been warning them that that's exactly what they can anticipate given the fact that they are aligned with him. They are going to share together this remarkable love for each other, but that by the nature of the case is going to put them at odds with the world, as Jesus refers to it. And so that uh, is really the context. He's indicated to them that had he not spoken to these who were hostile, their, would, their sin would not have been as serious. And now he adds to the idea of his words, his works. And of course, those are the two aspects of the way in which the ministry of Christ is conceived of in the New Testament, his word and his work. And that's going to apply to the disciples as well. So now shifting then to the idea of the works, he has uh, a, means if, use the indicative. And uh, we have the indicative down here. So then if, ta, this is the uh, accusative, neuter, plural, article, the works. And then this is from ergon, which means a work. The English term in physics of an erg, of course, is a measure of work. This is the accusative plural of this neuter noun. So if the works, and then may, uh, the negation, here with the first person uh, singular aorist active indicative of uh, poieo, I make or I do. So if the works I had not done is the idea. Uh, among them, this is N, takes the dative here, the dative plural, uh, uh, masculine. So if the works I had not done among them, uh, and then the relative pronoun ha, which is also in the accusative, neuter plural, which udes, this is a adjective, it means no one or nothing. Here in the uh, masculine, it means no one. And then we have uh, alos, which is a um, demonstrative uh, uh, pronoun going along with uh, udes, which no one other, alos means another, so which no other or none other person. Apoyesin, uh, this is the third person singular, uh, aorist active indicative, which no one else had done. So if the works had not been done among them, which no one else had done, in other words, works that were unprecedented, uh, works that were unlike anything that had ever taken place before, if it hadn't been for that rather conspicuous display of the unique power of Jesus, then Jesus says, hamartion, sin, uk, the negation, ekosan. Ekosan is from echo, I have. This is the irregular formation of the imperfect, so it's the third person plural imperfect active indicative, sin they would not be having, you might say. It's an ongoing idea. If there hadn't been this display of the unique works that Christ had done, then their sin would not be as weighty as the idea. None, now, in declinable adverb with this soft conjunction, but now, chi, and, also, or even, uh, and this play, it's going to be a both and kind of construction. But now they have both seen. This is from uh, harao to see. It's herakasen. Uh, this is the third person plural, perfect active indicative. They have seen and continue to see. And then along with that, kai memesekasen. Uh, this is uh, from miseo, which means to hate. This again is the third person plural perfect active indicative. So they have both seen and hated. Uh, and uh, that's the point that they've actually beheld both his words and his works. But rather than having those phenomena move them to a state of repentance, it simply ratcheted up their hostility. And of course, their seeing and hating has led then to uh, the fact that they have hated both Kai and me, me. Uh, they've hated me, Kai, again the connective, tone, patera, and the father of me. So as Jesus has already made clear before, those who hate Christ hate God. It's as simple as that. There's no such thing as hating Christ and loving God. There's no such thing as rejecting Christ and accepting God. 
in the New Testament, it's a package deal. It's going to be one without the other. It can't take place that way. And Jesus simply drives home that point once again in uh, this verse.